it's an extremely important clash at the Prague Masters 2024. Vidit Gujarati with the white pieces takes on Vincent Keimer. Vidit is a candidate. Vincent hasn't made it to the candidates this year, but look at his rating. 2738. Amazing player from Germany. The biggest talent from Germany in quite some time. C4 played by Vidit. The English opening. Vincent takes his night out to F6. Now, one of the things that makes these two players special is their opening prep. Vidit is fantastically well prepared and so is Keimer. And this has a lot to do with their team of seconds and trainers. Vincent is trained by Peter Leko, while Vidit by Surya Ganguly and Daniel Vokaturo. E5 played. We've seen this English happening on several occasions in this tournament. And this one is going to be no different. The four knights most likely are going to come out. Vincent takes his time. He plays his knight out to C6. Now... Vidit can go for these lines with e3. There's also a possibility of playing d3, but clearly the main line is g3 and he plays it. You want to put your bishop on g2. A lot of games have gone d5 here, but this time Vincent goes for the very interesting bishop b4. Now, if you see, it's actually Rosolimo in a way, right? Because Sicilian Rosolimo, you have bishop going to b5 and it's e4, c5, so it's reversed Rosolimo. Castles by black and now white also will most likely castle it out here. And that's exactly what has happened. Now once this has been done, maybe with its idea could be to jump in with his knight to the center of the board. But the pawn pushes forward to e4 and attacks the knight. And now this knight on f3 has to move uh, somewhere. But where exactly it goes to g5 and it attacks the pawn on e4 three times now. So this pawn cannot be defended as it's only defended once. So Vincent takes the knight and with it has a choice between taking with a d pawn and the b pawn. Clearly taking with the b pawn is superior. So he takes it towards the center, opening up the b file, strengthening his center control. Now Vincent has to defend this pawn on e4 so he plays rook to e8 this line has been very popular and has been played by legends like kasparov ivanchuk karpov queen c2 played by with it actually there are also moves like f3 and d3 hitting the center directly but with it tries to put more pressure here so that this pawn has to be defended and now vincent goes queen e7 defending it three times and it is attacked also three times. So you can't attack it more. You have to now uh, push the pawn. So pawn comes to d3. And Vincent can now take this pawn. Once the pawn is captured, e takes d3. And white recaptures. Let's take stock of the situation. White has a good center. Also two bishops. What does black have in return? Is a very, very good question. Well... The remaining pieces that are on the board for black are all well positioned and he has the control of the open e file. With it goes back with his knight to f3 and maybe the knight had done its job on g5 so it's time to bring it to the center. Vincent goes h6 maybe just stopping just in case bishop g5 ideas in future and just a useful move to make h3 by with it. He's also playing against this bishop here because if let's say the bishop comes to f5, knight d4 and now it doesn't have any g4 square. So h3 again a useful little move. Vincent goes bishop e6 and now with it goes knight to d4 and you can look at his clock timing. He has 1 hour 26 minutes. So clearly he is out prepared Vincent Keimer and he's putting pressure here on the c6 knight with his bishop and knight. So Vincent takes the knight. And now pawn takes on d4. If Vidit gets the move d5 here, he would be doing very well. He would have a lot of space. And that's the reason why he pushes forward with the move d5. Now if you take here, then the knight settles on this beautiful square on d5 and black is better. So Vidit pushes the pawn forward with c5. And this is a very weird structure. With these doubled pawns, the good news for white is that these, this knight doesn't have any good squares to go to. But on the other hand, the pawns have lost their flexibility. Knight at 7 played by Vincent. Slightly weird move. 
He wants to maybe look at coming to g5, putting pressure on h3. That could be his idea. And maybe the other plan is to maybe put his knight to f8 and then come over to g6. But there also the knight doesn't look like having a great future. So not particularly sure what he intends. Maybe he wants to meet f4 with f5. That could also be an idea. But with it for the time being plays his rook to b1. This is a very calm, cool move hitting the b pawn. Vincent hits the center with b6. And now what about this bishop on c1? It's time to develop it. One plan could be to go g4, bishop f4. I love this bishop on this long diagonal here. With it goes directly. He puts his bishop on f4. And now will this bishop actually be... Oh. Vincent goes knight f8. I get it what Vincent wants. He just wants his knight here and then he wants to maybe put g5 and knight g6. Not directly because then he has more space with it. Calmly brings his rook to e1 and he says to Vincent that look now my pieces are getting into life. Well here the move queen d7 is played attacking the pawn on h3. If you go king g2, king h2 there could be g5 coming in or knight g6. So with it has to tread carefully and he plays this very committal move c6 because now the tension in the center is gone. The c7 pawn has been targeted but now queen d8 played. Wow, this is getting very, very intense. I would go g4 just to make space for my bishop on this diagonal. I never wanted to go away but with it goes h4. Whoa, he's gone h4 there and can Vincent actually strike with g5? Another idea, of course, is to go knight g6, but he goes g5, he hits the bishop and he tells him, get your bishop out from here on f4. I don't want it on this diagonal. My c7 pawn need not be attacked so brutally. With it first takes, pawn takes, and of course you can't put your bishop on e5 because f6 would simply trap it. So with it goes back to d2. Now the h file is opened up and I think this benefits black because he can go king g7, knight g6, rook h8 and is very quick to move because he has more space and f6 played by Vincent. This looks like a good setup for black but white has a very powerful move here as wins, as with it comes to the board, sits down, he knows that there is something missing in black's position. The move actually is f4 which would break black's structure. If Vidit can find this move, f4, because and he plays it, beautiful move there, because if you take, I take with the bishop, my bishop is beautifully positioned there, so Vincent tries to close it, and if he gets f5, he would be very happy, because then queen f6, knight g6, so Vidit needs to sacrifice a pawn now, he does it, he pushes his pawn to f5, fantastic move, creating space on the f-file, and also for his bishop on f4, this is amazing. Rook f1 might be a great idea here for with it because now the king side is very, very weakened. He actually goes for rook takes e8, queen takes, and maybe now bishop takes d5 check is what he wants to play. So he takes it, and now king g7 is a must. You cannot go bishop e6. Oh, he plays it. But this is a massive mistake because rook e1 is a pin. And the point is if you go queen f7, then I take take and play queen c4 followed by d5 attacking g4 so clearly here taking queen f7 moving out of the pin is not going to work so what is it that vincent had on his mind here to rookie one and with it plays it rookie one is on the board wow vincent keimer is he just lost here well he had something else on his mind he wanted to sacrifice his queen whoa that is not that was not calculated because rook e8, rook e8, now he has a rook and a bishop for a queen. But this is not enough for sure because now with it plays this nice little move, queen d1 attacking this. If you go bishop f3, I take this long diagonal. If you play pawn to f5, your dark squares get weakened. f5 push and now the bishop can simply settle down on f4. But okay, you want to take care of your c6 pawn as well. Maybe a beautiful move is queen f1 attacking here. Will with it find it? That's an important question. Queen f1 provoking the bishop to come into f3 and then continuing the game. With it takes his time because he knows that he's got the win in the bag. He goes queen f1, fine move there. He finds it. 
Now, in order to defend the f5 pawn, you have to play bishop f3, and then Vidit can actually push his pawn to d5. This is what he wants. He wants this diagonal to open up. He wants d5, d6 to come in. Vincent Keimer is definitely in some intense trouble here. He goes bishop f3, and now Vidit, maybe d5 is the move. Well, these positions need to be converted carefully. You have 16 minutes on the clock and he pushes d5 and a totally, totally winning position. Now, the rook has to join in to the battle. Well, but if you play rook e2, it doesn't really matter. Rook e7 played uh, and now queen a1 just coming in with the queen here. Bishop g5 to block the h file because rook h7, uh, rook h1 could be an idea. With it, writes down the move. He's thinking here. He has to just take care of this one threat that is rook h7 that Vincent has planned. Uh, but apart from that, his position is totally winning. Like queen a1 would just do the trick because then the queen would simply enter here. Bishop b4. Oh my goodness, he's blundered it. He's blundered big time. And look at Vincent Keimer's expression. He knows it that there is a chance. He looks at the position, looks at with it, and he's like, what? What is your plan with it to rook at 7? I'm just coming in here. Your queen can't go anywhere. And look at Vincent. Oh my god. What a shock. He plays his rook to h7. And with it is stunned. With it is stunned. But he writes down his move. Because think about it. His queen can't move here. His king, if it goes up, rook h1 traps the queen. It's not even about checkmate. It's about trapping the queen. And Vincent is shocked. Why did Vidit give him this opportunity? And Vidit can't believe it. An entire game of 32 moves played with such precision and you blunder on 33rd move and the game is over. Wow, this is insane. Vidit is just so, so depressed there. He knows that there is nothing to be done and that's the sad part about this position, that there is no way. Because you know, the king can of course run away with here. There's no mate. But the queen has nowhere to go because of this d3 pawn. This is just so sad for the white queen. With it takes his time on the board, tries to maybe calm down. He is upset, of course, because he knows that there's nothing much to be done. From plus 5 position, it has ended into minus 5. And he plays king f2. Rook h1 comes in and he resigns the game. What a terrible moment for Vidit Gujarati. Vincent Keimer, of course, here uh, with this lucky win. But then again, there is nothing like pure luck in chess. You have to be careful on every given move. Vidit immediately gets up from his chair. He was not at all happy with this. And Vincent scores his first win of the tournament. A sad loss for Vidit.